the Porter of Robs, the Rob Porter. tonight let's give it up to everybody who came on before me you guys did an awesome job you've been a great crowd except for some people in the back doing their own thing but you want to listen now I want to start off with a public service announcement tonight please realize that arguing with stupid people is just like masturbating with sandpaper it's gonna hurt like hell the entire time even though you may feel some pleasure in the end The one guy, um, what was his name? I, I can't see him here. He was talking about the Boston shootings and everything, the bombings. I did find one humorous thing in all of it. The New York Post one day posted a title about that the subject was a brown man. And they showed two Middle Eastern guys with backpacks. And neither one of them were the guys they were fucking looking for. The next day, I'm watching CNN with some friends, and they have a shot of a neighborhood with everybody in camo and military weapons who are marching through the streets, and through it all is walking a black guy like this. We all knew what he was thinking. We heard you was looking for a brown man. I am not the brown man you was looking for. You know what I'm saying. I do have a question. I left Michigan for about 13, 14 years. I came back. When did the douchebag invade northern Michigan and why was nothing done to repel the douche? What the hell happened? Shimmers is like douchebag command. That's where all the planning of the douchebaggery to take place in town happens. The recruitment outpost is the double wide. Streeters is douchebag training. They train in multifaceted levels of douchebaggery there. I used to drive cab one night. I took two guys back there, and I think the lesson that night was learning to lure with scent. My, my cab smelled like douchebag basted in brute. You have no idea the hell. And the women that go there, I have nothing against bigger girls. Brittany, you know I love you, baby. I draw the line when the bitch comes with her own rumble. And I pulled up one night. It's pouring the rain down, and they're, the best way to describe it is a herd of these women Bouncing and gyrating to the music, and the way they did it reminded me of the mating dance of the West African water buffalo. Oh, But I swear these douchebags, you know where they come from? You know where they spawn from? Reality TV. Jersey Shore spawned the douchebag. And I realized there is a God when they finally canceled that show. If he's the situation, I'm the fucking solution. That's all I'm saying. The best thing for Snooky is to tie her chunky ass to the back of a speedboat and just drag her up and down the North Atlantic during hammerhead mating season. She looks like a burnt Miss Piggy, I swear to God. Oh, Survivor, you voted me off the island because you didn't like me? Fuck you. Send 50 Klansmen to Compton. Let them try to start a rally. You'll watch that shit, won't you? You will watch that. That's true Survivor. Send 15 kayakers down the Amazon, the last little bitch alive in tights that can survive the natives, the elements, the diseases, the animals. I'll watch that. The only reality TV show I ever want to see made is called Reality TV Sucks, where each week my assistant and I will travel the globe and just beat the shit out of reality show cast members. For the series finale, we beat the shit out of each other. Oh, sorry, I get worked up on things. You know, I look at drugs in society. How many groups are out there screaming they want a drug-free America, right? How many commercials do you see? Drug-free America, drug-free zone. Watch the average hour over television. How many commercials do you see for drugs? Don't take these drugs over here. These are bad drugs. You're bad drugs. Take these ones over here, the ones we make money off of, even though they may kill you, they may, your hair might fall out, you may go blind, you may go deaf, your nipples may fall off, your penis may get up and move away, or you may have a third arm growing out of your ass. <laughs> the 60s, I realized people in the 60s were wearing the clothes because of the drugs. People in the 70s were doing the drugs because of the clothes. I still remember a baby blue polyester suit my mom put me in in 1978, and I still want to kick her ass for it. I look like a pimp's mini-me. Real quick, I want to tell you guys an iPod commercial I wrote that if they play it during the Super Bowl, it'll be the greatest commercial of the year. 
They show the outside of a big brick steeple church. The doors are open. Everything's decorated. You see the limo up front, and you hear the wedding march. They show from inside in the balcony, looking down, the pews are filled. Everybody's in their places. The father and the bride are walking up the aisle. You hear the wedding march. Then they show split screen, mom of the groom, mom of the bride. Each of them had their iPods in, listening to Cats in the Cradle. A song about their babies growing up, leaving the nest, moving on, and they're crying. They show the father of the bride. He's got Pink Floyd's money. Who do you think's paying for this fucking thing? <laughs> then they show the bride. She has Bitch by Meredith Brooks. A song about women being empowered, taking control, and just kicking some ass. And she's got that Jack Nicholson Joker grin on her face. And then they show the groom. He looks down. He doesn't hear the wedding march. He hears the Imperial Death March from Star Wars. <laughs> turns and looks at the priest. The priest is like, you can do it. He turns and looks back, and the bride comes into view. And it's not the bride. It's Darth Vader. There's three stormtroopers behind her holding flowers like bridesmaids. The sound of a lightsaber comes on, but instead of the shape of a lightsaber, it comes up in the shape of a bouquet of roses. And she looks at the groom and goes, who's your daddy now? He turns and looks at his best man, who's now Chewbacca. For the YouTube version, I want the priest dancing like Michael Jackson while singing Beat It. I think it's appropriate, but it'll never make it to network. All right, the last thing I want to tell you guys is, this is a great cause tonight. I want to thank you all. I'm here not only because I'm a comic. Last Friday the 13th, I got a call from my oncologist that my, I have chronic myeloid leukemia. And I'm laying in bed listening to what she has to say. And I thought to myself and I said, well, at least it's not herpes. And I told her that and she said, what? I said, at least it's not herpes. You can beat cancer, you can beat leukemia, but y'all ass can't beat herpes. And she said, nobody has ever responded like that before. I have lived through shit that would kill most people. I've had my head sliced open, my side sliced open. I've been hit by a car doing 70. I've been in car accidents that I've walked away from. And I've kindly come to realize that neither God nor the devil want me. And they're both just playing rocks, paper, scissors, and who gets stuck with my ass. And the devil's in front of God going, look, time out. We got to talk, okay? <laughs> Let's go over the list. Now, I have happily taken Bin Laden. And I've gladly taken Saddam. I've taken Hitler, Kaczynski, and Bundy. And we know both those damn well. I'm taking motherfucking OJ. I draw the line somewhere. I'm sorry, I see, the, I see the devil having a brother's voice. You know what I'm saying? He's got a lot of soul. Come on. <laughs> yeah, all right. You guys have been great tonight. I want to thank you for coming out. You guys have a great night. And give it up for the next guy.